Welcome back to our second hour of our study. This is uh, CMS 20 today. This is the Conscience, Morality, and Spiritual Life study. Lesson number 20. The uh, notes are found in the 19 and 20 combined notes. And we're beginning with uh, slide 66, which is page 17. Page 17 of the notes. Slide 66. We'll begin with a moment of silent prayer, the opportunity, if necessary, to confess any known sins, be cleansed of all unrighteousness, and prepared for the teaching of the Word. Please pray with me. Father, as we study this hour, we ask for the Spirit's teaching in our lives, giving us examples in our own circumstances and situations that we found ourselves in in the past, so that we might recognize how these things relate to us, so that we might put them into effect, utilize your word as our means of living, that we might live by the word. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. From Colossians uh, 3, uh, we have verses 15 and 16. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Verse 16, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. Well, your objective here is to, uh, is to tell me where these verses take place, in the, where they belong in the thinking process. In the thinking process, where, do, where does verse 15 belong? Where does verse 15 belong here? Let the peace of Christ rule where? In your hearts. Okay, where in this process is your heart? Where's your heart? It has to, after, the volitional after the volitional interlude, right here. All right. That's your heart. Where does all of this take place? Prior to the volitional interlude, where's all that taking place? In your mind, right. This is the heart. All of this is the mind. Because you transfer it from your mind through your volition into the heart, right? Phew, boy. <laughs> false clues, huh? Don't give false clues. All right, where does verse 16 belong? Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. All right, I heard a mumbling. That said in the appraisal filters, S A M B A K. Wow. So where where is that? Knowledge. Knowledge. All right. Bec uh, now some people would say, well, would say belief, right? What was that? I didn't hear that. Yeah, the knowledge of the word. Some people would say belief because they're thinking that, well, this is just a belief. No, this is a knowledge of the word, uh, what the word says, and uh, how it affects your appraisal process. Now, what is that knowledge? We call it knowledge divine viewpoint. Okay, divine viewpoint. Because a Christian is different than a regular person. A regular person, an unbeliever, a, a human being, a child of Adam, uh, has these six appraisal filters. Self-concept, <coughs> attitude, mood, beliefs, attribution, and knowledge. What does the believer have 
beyond that in the appraisal process. Huh? Divine viewpoint. That's right. Knowledge, divine viewpoint. You have divine viewpoint to, to uh, uh, enter into knowledge. Does divine viewpoint also enter into self-concept? Mm -hmm. Does divine viewpoint enter into attitude? Mm -hmm. Does divine viewpoint enter into your mood? Yeah. Does divine viewpoint yeah. enter into your belief? Yeah. Enter into your attributions. Yeah. That's right. Well, I heard that. I heard, oh, boy. <laughs> Feel an altar call coming on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Ushers, bring forth the offering plates. <laughs> okay. Here's another one. Do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complete renovation of your thinking. Then you will be able to know the will of God, what is good and is pleasing to him and is perfect. So... Where's that at? Where's that at? Uh, I'm talking to this, yeah, this verse. Well, yeah, do you think that's, uh, that you could divide it up? What's that? It would be in the heart. Do not conform yourselves to the standard of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complete renovation of your thinking. Then you will be able to know the will of God, what is good and is pleasing to him and is perfect. <laughs> All right. An event takes place. Okay. Pick an event. Some, some event. Um, Let's say uh, the opportunity to gossip. The opportunity to gossip. Okay, you're standing there and somebody's gossiping about someone, and you know some interesting facts. Okay, so you have event, you have the perception of the event. Now, the standard of this world is gossip. Okay. Do not conform yourselves to the standard of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complete renovation of your thinking. Where do you do your thinking? In your mind. And what does your thinking consist of? Appraisal filters, the appraisal process. Okay, so how is your, how does God transform you inwardly by a complete renovation of your thinking? And I just... Went through it last slide and you and just about had an altar call because you said divine viewpoint affects your self-concept, your attitude, your mood, your beliefs, your attributions, and your knowledge. That's the complete renovation of your thinking. That now I don't think self-concept about me, human me, but spiritual son of God me. Okay, that's divine viewpoint. See, was Jesus reviled? <coughs> was his self-concept bruised by, by all the terrible, rotten things they did to him? No. No. Why? Divine. Divine viewpoint. That's right. His self-concept is in his place in God. Okay? So will ours be. Can you hurt me? Physically. You want to try? All right. The parking lot after church. <laughs> uh, can you hurt me? No. Why? What can you say to me that would hurt me? That would be hurtful if I have my thinking renovated by divine viewpoint, by doctrine. Right? Okay. So. Then you'll be able to know what the will of God is, what is good and pleasing to him and, as is, and is perfect. What is that going to be? It's still in the appraisal filters. You're going to know what it is. You do the thinking and you say, oh yeah, I know what the answer is. Not gossip. I refuse to gossip. Why? Well, because I know that gossip is a sin. Right? My thinking has been changed. And it doesn't matter what the situation is, 
the transformation by a complete renovation of your thinking will change the way you appraise every situation. Every situation will be appraised from divine viewpoint. And then you don't get mad. You don't get hurt. You don't get... Even. Don't get what? Even. Even, right. All right, this old diagram that's been renewed, you have this uh, diagram in your notes. You have a full page diagram of this. All right, so. Oh, let's try this color. Yeah, let's not. Isn't that weird? The white part. Okay. That's weird, isn't it? Okay. All right. Thank you very much, people. All right. Fill in the blanks. <laughs> You're so smart. Fill in the blanks. <laughs> fill in the blanks. What's right up here? What's right up there? It's got six sides, just like Sandback, but it's not. The sinful nature. The flesh, that's, uh, that's where your sinful nature is. What's this over here? Huh? Spirit. Okay. What would this little thing right here be? Huh? The wood valve? Volition valve, that's correct right here. Volition valve. What would this little thing up here be? Huh? <laughs> this is read them all. This is the spirituality carnality valve. Carnality spirituality valve. Also known as the first John 1 9 valve. Okay? See, the spirit's coming in, the flesh is coming in. This is your valve. You can swing this over. Ooh, actually, ooh, yeah. Let's try this. Let's try this. Ah, uh, I can't do it. Never mind. I, I can't do it with that. This is the valve. You confess your sins, what happens? Blocks off the flesh, right? The, the flesh... Uh, Input, okay? You commit a sin, what happens? Blocks, blocks off your... Blocks off the input from the spirit. Uh, uh, nope. Nope, not in the old diagrams. What, uh, what are you confused well, about? Don't we make that happen? Well, yeah, but it's a, it's, this is not, this is a, com a different diagram than your thinking process diagram. This is your, this is the spiritual life, re life representation diagram. All right, let me go ahead here since I've got you confusolated. This is your mind. This is your mind. Let's see about this one. Can you all get this one? This one is your heart. heart. Very good. Yes, that's your heart. Okay. So what would this be between your mind and your heart? Volition, Volition valve. Okay. And then what's down here? It's your knowledge. Your brain. Your brain. That is the brain. Okay. All right. So this is the spiritual function valve. Spiritual life function valve. A spiritual life functional diagram. The Holy Spirit input into your thinking. The old sin nature input into your thinking. Okay? You choose which one will predominate by how you flip the valve. 1 John 1, 9. If I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to 
forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Puts me back in fellowship with him. I'm, I'm getting the things of the spirit are flowing through. Things of the flesh are being blocked off. What do I have in my mind, though? Memory. Memory of the, of the, of the flesh. The things of the flesh. Okay? And that's why you have uh, verses that say, to be carnally minded, fleshly minded, is death. To be spiritually minded is life. Okay? So then what we think in our mind, and we run it through the volition, and we choose it, and it goes into our heart, and then that goes into our brain to, to get our body to act. That's why Paul says, do not submit your members, do not submit your members to the sinful nature to do the things of, okay? but, but, uh, You're acting it out. It's, you're either, I mean, it could be just a thought or it could be an action. Right? But it's, once it's in your heart, then it's going to the brain. Because the brain carries out the, the uh, functions of, of the decisions of the soul. Okay? Now, of course, all the information comes in through your brain and then goes up to the two areas where you think. Okay? Spiritual knowledge comes in, you perceive it in your brain, it goes up, it goes into your spirit. Okay, where it's spiritually processed. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. For the natural man, the soul man, receives not the things of God because they are spiritually discerned. Okay. Does it make any sense to an unbeliever that Jesus could die on a cross 2,000 years ago and save you? No, it doesn't make any sense. Well, then that happened. Yeah. Does it make any sense to, to read the Bible, that collection of ancient books written by people that uh, were just delusional? No, of course not. But the spiritually discerned, those things go into, the spirit, uh, into our spirit, and then they flow into our thinking, into our mind. Okay? Now we uh, will, well, and then there's always this return flow from your heart. It goes up to your sinful nature. From your heart, it goes back to the spirit. From your mind, it's going back and forth to them. Okay? And we'll see how that plays out as we go further along. So, how, where does this diagram fit into this diagram? Looks like I should have done this slide first, huh? <laughs> should have done... I thought you all were going to remember all of this, and so I... But... <laughs> just hurt her self-esteem. <laughs> just hurt her self-esteem. Okay, so where does this diagram, the event, the perception of the event, the appraisal process, the representation, volitional valve in the heart, where does that fit in this diagram? Okay, well, the heart's pretty easy, right? So we're going to put the heart right down here. Volitional valve, that's pretty easy, right? We're going to put that right here. Now, how about, uh, how about the event? Where does the event go? In the, brain. The, heart, the event and the perception of the event go all the way down here to the brain. That's where you perceive those. So where, where does the... Appraisal process and the representation go. In the mind. Right there. Okay. They're geniuses. They're geniuses. They didn't start off that way last slide, did they? <laughs> but they're uh, wiggy G's now. Okay, so that's what's going on here is the thinking in the mind is that process. Now, what do we want going on in our mind? The complete renovation of your thinking by, by the Word, by the Lord, see? So that's what we want. We want this valve to be over here blocking the things of the flesh so that we're just taking in, okay? We're taking in, taking in. Because, because can the things of the flesh enter into the Spirit? So if somebody says, uh, 
Somebody says uh, steal, you know, gossip, and, and that comes up here to the spirit. Can that get through? No. No, that's not going to get through. But if it comes over here to the flesh and you've got that open, what's, gonna, what's your mind going to start thinking? Yeah. Okay. Start justifying. Yeah. Well, people need to know about this. All right. Here's the verse. 1 John 1, 8. If we say that we have no sin nature, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Where does that verse relate to this diagram? If we say that we have no sin nature, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We have a sinful nature. Are there people who say we do not? Yeah. Even believers that say we do not. That say, oh no, when you're born again, you don't sin anymore. You might make mistakes, but you don't sin anymore. Okay? All right. So we know that we have a sinful nature. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. Where does that verse fit into the diagram? The, which one? Right here, into this spiritual carnality valve. They're constantly warring. They, the flesh wants you to push the valve that way. The spirit wants you to push the valve that way. Okay. Now, in this diagram, the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants, and the spirit gives us desires that are opposite to what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you're not free to carry out your good intentions, Galatians 5.17. Where does that take place? In the appraisal filters, that's right. Sinful nature says, self-concept, make me feel important, make me feel better than other people, make me feel uh, prettier than other people, make me feel more wanted, more desired, more approved, okay? All of those things. That's what the sinful nature is going to say. What's the spirit going to say? You are in Christ, okay? You are in Christ. So that this, this battle takes place right in there. That's where the battle takes place, is in the filters. Once you have a representation, that battle is pretty much over. So there's only one thing to stop it. That's your volition. Okay? So this readiness potential. What do you think that this representation, remember that readiness potential that's building up in your brain? That's building up in your brain, the, the LeBay's research about that readiness potential, the people pushing the button, so on. What do you think is going to be building up if you're minding the things of the flesh? What's going to be building up in you uh, in an event that takes place? What things are going to be building up in you? The sinful nature viewpoint are going to be building up. And then what do you have to say? I resist that temptation. Because this representation then is a temptation. Okay, It's a temptation now. The representation is a temptation. But it's a temptation. It's, it's the representation that comes about from the appraisal filters being dominated by the sinful nature. Right? Because are you going to appraise based on the spirit, are you going to be tempted? God does not tempt anyone. God is not temptable and he tempts no one. Right? James chapter 4. Remember James about the temptation? We we're tempted when we're pulled along by our own, our own lust patterns our, and uh, enticed with bait. Okay, So bait would be the event, perception of the event. We see the bait, we appraise it. Our own sinful nature wants to pull us along into one of these sandbacks of arrogance, personal, uh, personal fulfillment, personal... A desire where the spirit is saying, no. Well, if you're controlled by the flesh, what do you think is going to come out? A temptation representation. 
So then you have to resist it right here. Resist. Resist the temptation. Resist the temptation. Okay. Now, if you're controlled by the spirit here in the appraisal process, and all of these fil all of these filters are functioning on the positive, the spiritual uh, input, what's going to come out here in representation? What's going to come out? Fruit and gifts. Okay. That's the representation. Fruit and gifts. Okay. So then you say yes. You put on the new man. You say yes. That is created in Christ Jesus in righteousness and in holiness. Right? Put on the new man. Yes. That's where that comes in, and I probably have that. I don't know if I went that far to give you that verse. Okay, because you have to remember that the appraisal process, every aspect of the appraisal process is influenced by the happiness attainment motivators. Okay? The happiness attainment motivators are part of your brain, and they influence your soul in the area of self-concept. Self-concept. Could your self-concept have anything to do with power? Could it have anything to do with materialism? Do you ever know people that their self-concept is based on how they dress? Kind of car they drive? House they live in? How about power? Ever know anybody that their self-concept is based on their control of uh, people and situations and so on? How about sex? Sex do could, could sex influence your self concept? Are you sexy? If you're not sexy, what do they feel about themselves? I'm worthless. What do you think about those women that went after Tiger Woods? Do you think that their self concept was wrapped up in sex? Maybe a little materialism too, right? Okay, or power. Chemical, does chemical have an effect on your self-concept, your chemical desires? Religious approbation, sure. All of the happiness attainment motivators influence every one of your appraisal filters. Attitude is affected by them. Mood is affected by them. Beliefs are affected by them. Your attribution is affected by them. Your knowledge is affected by the happiness attainment motivators. That's how the sinful nature battles against the spirit. Okay, this is the weapons, these are the weapons of the sinful nature in battling against the spirit. Right? It's a whole lot different than just saying, oh yes, the flesh battles against the spirit. How does the flesh battle against the spirit? How? Well, with the hams. And the hams in my knowledge base, or the hams in my self-concept appraisal of situations, or the hams in the, in the uh, uh, attitude appraisal filter. In my mood. Chemical especially affects mood. Okay. That's, those are the weapons of the fleshly warfare. Those are the weapons. And, that's, and what happens? The works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Okay? Adultery, fornication, all of those things. See? And then uh, we looked at them just a few weeks ago. That every one of, in that list in Galatians, the works of the flesh, all fit into the six hams. Those are the output. But this is the input. This is the input, the the Power, materialism, sex, chemical, religious, and approbation are the input into your appraisal filter process that will result in a representation of adultery, fornication, uh, uh, cliques, uh, factions, uh, pharmacia, witchcraft, of, of uh, 
all of the others that are in the list, those are what come out as a representation when you put these in the appraisal filter process, right? Make more sense now? Can you resist those things at the thinking level if you know that they're there? Okay. So I, something comes up, um, gossip, we'll use gossip again. Gossip comes up and I go, am I going to say it or am I not? Well, self-concept, self-concept, and uh, what are the what are the main hams, happiness attainment motivators that influence self-concept? Name a few for me. Okay. Do we have any religious self-concept people that are just so pious, you know, so pious? Um, how about self-concept power? How about self-concept chemical? Yeah. But the main ones, the main ones for self-concept that make self-concept happy are sex and approbation. Those are the first that are going to come up. When you think about yourself, you're going to say, am I liked? What can I do to be liked, respected, uh, uh, esteemed? Or how do I look? In our culture, how do you look is based on sex. Okay? It's based on sex. Based on sex appeal is how, how do I look. Okay? Do I look like the sexy people on television, in the magazines, and so on. Okay? That's the self-concept. I mean, look at the little girls. Look at the little girls that are, that are wearing the low-cut uh, jeans with their belly buttons hanging out and the high tops. And, and I mean, just look at, the, look at children if you want to know what self-concept and the happiness attainment motivators are about. It's mostly sex, mostly approbation. The others are secondary because approbation is all about me, right? Am I respected? Am I loved? Am I, am I cared for? Am I, am I esteemed? Am I important to other people? All right. Or how do I look? How do I look? Do I look good? Well, it depends on your standard. Well, if your standard is the world's standards, wait a minute. Do not conform to the standards of the world, but be ye transformed by the renovation of your thinking. Okay? So now I don't worry about the sexy clothes. Don't worry about my sexy makeup. I don't worry about my sexy... I'm not trying to be sexy. Okay? I'm not trying to be sexy. What am I trying to be? Hmm, I don't know. What am I trying to be? Maybe we should all be Amish. Not try to be anything. What's that, though? Okay, then that's religious that I am happy because I am so homely. I look so bad. I look so plain. But boy, am I going to get a reward for that. Okay? Self-concept religious. Okay? I mean, look at some of the, some of the denominations in Christianity and their self-concept is based on their self. Could, would they ever wear uh, something that was sexy? No. Because the, their pri their, they have been changed from uh, sexy uh, influence on their self-concept to religious and approbation with their group. And that's why they all wear the same clothes and they all have the same hairdos and, and I mean, you can walk, watch them down on the street and you can say, that church, that church, that church, that church. You can tell because their self-concept has been influenced by their religious teaching, not spiritual teaching, not spirituality, but by religious and approbation. Okay? 
and we could do the same, and we will eventually. We'll go through attitude, mood, and attributions, all of them, and show how they tie together. Romans 8, 7, and 8. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the principles or law of God, nor indeed can be, so then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So what do we have in this, uh, in this verse? What, are, what would this diagram look like uh, in, the, in the instance of this verse? So only one little change that we have to make. The vowel over here is flipped this way, right? It's flipped. It's flipped that way, blocking off the things of the Spirit. Okay? Romans 8, 6, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. What about this diagram? What's going to change in this one? You're going to flip the valve, right? To be carnally minded. How can you be anything but carnally minded if the, if the spiritual things are shut off? If the influence of the Spirit is shut off? Is the Holy Spirit the still small voice and you've got earmuffs on when you flip the valve? Okay. Sure, you may ask a question. Okay, the question is, how does this fit for someone like Cornelius, who uh, was uh, not regenerated, uh, but uh, God heard his prayers and his, uh, his righteousness and uh, sent Peter to him uh, because he was at God consciousness. He was positive at God consciousness. So uh, that would be the uh, influence of input into the brain, okay, cycled around, he only has one option, right, no spirit, no spirit, so it has to cycle around into the sinful nature, and what else has to happen? What has to happen? What happened to every believer in the Old Testament before regeneration? What happened to every believer for them to become believers. Faith, a volitional, decision. volitional decision of faith. Faith is the volitional decision. What happened to them? God revealed himself to them. Okay? So, uh, if they're positive, God reveals himself to them, and they then have the ability, through the Holy Spirit, functioning as a human spirit to understand. So just like an unbeliever today gets saved, they have no spirit, but what happens when they hear the gospel? Uh, they are convinced, they're drawn by the Father, convinced by the Holy Spirit, right up here. See, the Holy Spirit functions as their spirit, giving them giving them input, spiritual input. Of course, they don't have this valve because they don't have a choice. So they have an understanding. So they have, they have an understanding of, because of the revelation from God. And, and God knows the heart, and people are motivated, uh, but he was not motivated uh, by just pure chance. He knew something, okay? He knew something. He'd had a revelation. He, why, would he, why would he give to the God of the Jews? Why would he pray to the God of the Jews if he didn't know that the God of the Jews existed? So he had to know. Right. But anybody, and I mean, that's the whole Old Testament. Nobody in the Old Testament was regenerated. You know, they all had to have God revealed to them in one way or the other, even either through the prophets or through the direct uh, Holy Spirit intervention. And, and there are instances of both. And that was the case with Cornelius. So what did he say when Peter came? Essentially, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've been waiting for you because I knew. Well, how did he know? He didn't get it from, from, the, the, uh, from the priestess of Diana. 
you know, he got it from the Holy Spirit or from somebody witnessing to him, telling him about the God of the Jews, the one true God. Yes, diagram for Old Testament believers is uh, different. Uh, they have instead of a instead of a First John one nine valve, they have a faith valve. This this would be the faith valve, and whatever is told them, they have to trust it. So essentially, uh, they the problem with this diagram is that this has to be volitional. You know, like you guys said, this is a volition valve. Well, it is. It's a volitional valve. The things come in to the mind. And, and, and in this representation, this is just to get the spiritual and the carnal. And I believe me, I have moved that valve to other places trying to make it be more accurate. But you just, you really can't make it perfect. So it's a diagrammatic representation. So they would have a faith valve when they would hear then uh, they would hear here, and then they would have faith here, and they would transfer it then uh, by faith, because faith was their means of, of spirituality. Is there animal sacrifice part of that? Sure, yeah, that would be what they would hear, you know, that, that the Lamb of God uh, is slain for your salvation. Okay, okay, I believe in the Lamb of God. Is the Lamb of God here yet? Nope, but I believe in him. By faith. They, yeah. they had to believe that the angel of death would pass over them because mm -hmm. they obeyed and put that on the lentils and the door. Right. Hear and obey. Hear and obey. Hear in faith or hear and obey. You've got, if you hear God and obey, okay, that's why he says, I desire obedience more than sacrifice. Okay. You can go through the motions of the sacrifice. But that's not, that's not what he wants. He wants the obedience from the heart that you are trusting him. Trust in him is the obedience. Okay. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. What does this do to the diagram? This puts this into place. Okay? This puts this into place and it now puts in the valve. Okay? That's what has happened diagrammatically to you uh, at, when you believed in Christ and were regenerated. You re, your spirit became regenerated. You have a new spiritual genetic and you have the ability to translate the Word of God into your being, into your thinking. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Where does that come from? Okay. That's still provision. That's still the Spirit. It's still here. We have that. You see, this is your potential here. Do you have to walk by means of the Spirit? No. You can walk by means of the flesh. Okay. You live by the Spirit. Should you not also walk by the Spirit? So that's the potential. Those good works that he created that we do them, that we walk in them. Whose works are they? His. They're his. So what's that? This is, this is the, the spiritual walk. Okay? Let me go ahead and get rid of that. And let's see. Let's go with uh, green here. This is the spiritual, this is the, the walking by means of the Spirit. See where it's going? That's the walk by means of the Spirit. What blocks that walk by means of the Spirit? Flipping the valve. Flip the valve, and what happens? You're not walking by means of the Spirit anymore, are you? You can't, because the valve is fixed. Can you continue that process? No. What's got to happen now? you got to live on, by memory, or you've got to live by the sinful nature. And a lot of people live by memory. Okay? 
I remember a fellowship with the Father and I remember what's good. What do they turn it into then? Human good, right? It's not the Spirit doing it anymore. It's not the Spirit doing it anymore. It's them. Let's use red for that. Then they're like this. And... Right. Yeah, it's the religious walk. It's the walk of religion. Right? And, and that's what people think is the spiritual life. Morality. That's the whole purpose of our study. This is the morality walk. What's, are they doing human bad? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Necessarily, they will. They will but they're functioning on human good, and when they fail, they produce what? Human bad. Right? They produce human bad because that's the only choice. you got to function. If you're functioning in the... Or they may even reject what they knew spiritually before and say it doesn't work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the other thing. In fact, I've, one of the fellows that I that had sent in a prayer request that I communicate with, he says, you know, I'm, I'm miserable. All I want to do is is to uh, uh, see my daughter and play my guitar. You know, music is the only thing that comforts me, but I don't know where I should go with my music. So what I write him back? Your music is not the solution to your problem. The music is a, is a, a means of, of covering up your problem. That's not your problem. Your, your solution is in the Lord. It has to be in the Lord. And he says, and this is what he said, I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed and I don't have peace. It's not working. It's not working. Why isn't it working? What's that? He has a notion of peace. What's that? Self-concept is in the flesh. Where do you get peace? Do you get peace by praying for it? Where do you get peace? Fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit. So can you ask for peace 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and get peace? No. See, that's the God is a genie in the bottle approach to Christianity. Whatever I want, God's going to give me. But that doesn't work that way. You are a child. You have to grow up into all things. Okay? We have, we have responsibilities. So I told him, peace doesn't come by prayer. Peace comes by the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit comes by walking by means of the Spirit. What are you doing to walk by means of the Spirit? Playing the guitar? Wishing? Praying? No. You've got to learn some doctrine and learn how to walk by means of the Spirit so that you have peace. You'll have peace. Okay? And uh, that you put on a new man which is created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. That's the same thing. Put on the new man. This is putting on the new man. Putting on the new man. Right there. Okay? Putting on the new man. Do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complete renovation of your thinking. What's that? We've already covered it. We've already covered it. Okay? It's, it's this. Thinking, thinking, thinking. The mind, the appraisal filters are controlled by the Spirit. Set your mind on the things that are above, not on the things that are upon the earth. For you died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall be manifested, then shall you also with him be manifested in glory. Okay? So set your mind on the things that are above, not on the things that are low, below. What's that? It's this process. There. There. Okay? There. But what is it in the appraisal process? Is it set on, it's on divine viewpoint of the sandbags, the divine viewpoint of the sandbags. 
divine viewpoint of my self-concept, divine viewpoint of my attitude, my beliefs, my mood. Like really children, they? They all... Sure. Yeah, the self-concept of the child is is influenced by the world, by their environment, by their school, by their peers, by their friends. And what do most people know? The world standards. Right? So it's very, very, it's a constant, constant alertness to what they're getting and how you interpret that for them because it's very difficult for a child to understand the difference between human good and spirituality. Right? I mean, we've taught that. I think they, they can say it by rote. They know that, but I'm not sure how much experientially they, right. they get that. Well, and that's, I mean, how much do, does it, how much do adult believers get it? Oh, that's, true. Yeah. that's true. And now, little children, abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. You see, the wood, hay, and stubble are what? Good works. Good works. Morality. The morality walk. Right here. The morality walk. Wood, hay, and stubble. Versus the spiritual walk. Right here. Is this abiding in him? I mean, that's it. That's abiding. Being at home in Him. Your communication is with Him. He's communicating with you. You're walking by means of the Spirit. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, He cleanses us from all sin. Okay. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty with which Christ has made us free and be not entang entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Where's the yoke of bondage? It's over there. It's the morality walk, right? The yoke of bondage is the morality walk. Is the yoke of bondage sins? No. no. What's the yoke of bondage? The law. Law keeping, rule keeping, morality. Morality is the yoke of bondage. You're free from that. Now, what does that mean to be free from that? Well, in the diagram, it means this. But what does it, what does it mean in the sandbags? Freedom from, from depression and guilt and, and uh, worry and anxiety. That's liberty. See? Right. Depression has ruled her life because of morality. Keeping morals to try to be a good Christian. And, and yeah. is that frustrating? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can you be good enough? Nope. So all you can do is be frustrated, feel inadequate, depressed, anxious, fearful. And that's why it's, those are the emotional sins. Our fear, anxiety, anger, all the things that come out of trying to live the spiritual life in the power of morality. So when you get angry about something, do you think that you're walking by means of the Spirit? No. So is that a clue? How about when you feel guilty? Are you walking by means of the Spirit? How about when you're depressed? Walking by, unless you have a, a brain function problem, brain chemical problem, if you're depressed, it's spiritual. Okay? It's spiritual. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Okay. For the sin nature, is what this really says, shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under law, but under grace. When does the sin nature have dominion over you? When you're trying to keep the law, right? When you're trying to keep the law, then the sin nature has dominion over you. Okay? So I say, law. Law. Does law fit over here on the spiritual side? No. You're not under law. You're under grace. What's on this side? Grace. Right. 
So you are not under law, you are under grace. That's the bondage. That's the bondage. Trying to be good enough. Trying to be good enough. Even so, reckon you also yourselves to be dead unto the sin nature, but alive unto God in Christ Jesus. Reckon. Where does that take place? Right in here. Just be, that's your representation that comes out here. This representation is right there. And that's where you reckon yourself dead. Because in your thinking process, the temptation comes up and says, do this. You say, no, I'm dead to that. I reject it. I resist it. I refuse it. And you say no to it. You say no to it. Be not carried about with various and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. Okay? How do you establish your heart with grace? Right there again. That's establishing the heart with grace. This is establishing the heart with grace. Grace is a spiritual function. Law is the sinful nature function of being good. Grace, you trust it. Okay? Grace is a free gift of the reservoir of righteousness. So that's what you do. Establish it with grace. Don't be carried about with various and strange doctrines. What was he talking about in Hebrews? Jewish law keeping. Keeping the law. Keeping the law. All right. I think we have covered this subject adequately enough for today. <laughs> see, see new perspectives. New ways of understanding. Okay? Rather than think on these things. Think on whatever is good, whatever is pure, whatever is... Well, how? You have to know how to think. You have to know how you think in order to know where the thinking takes place. To take place in the representation. To take place in the appraisal filters. To take place in the, the uh, spiritual carnal valve. Where, is it, where, is it, where are you taking place in order to be able to do it? Well, let's close with a word of prayer and then we'll go into our time of petition and supplication. Those who are watching on the internet, if you have prayer requests, you may email them in and we'll add them to our prayer time. Uh, next week we'll have uh, a substitute teacher. I'll be gone and uh, uh, Tim Bates will be teaching again next week. And uh, so please join us for that. And uh, then I'll be back the weekend after that, the first weekend of the, in the new year after yeah, the first weekend in the new year after New Year's weekend. Right. Okay. So it'll be the second weekend of the new year. Let us pray. Father, we're grateful that you have given us everything that we need for life and for godliness. That we don't have to try to please you by our good deeds so that we don't have to face the frustration and depression and anxiety of failure that comes about in trying to be good, but that you have given us the means of walking in the good works that you have prepared that we might walk in them. We thank you for our time together. We ask that the Spirit give us examples, show us illustrations in our daily life over the next week or two where we can see opportunities to, to put on the new man, to think the divine viewpoint, to resist human good, and to put ourselves into closer fellowship with you through your Son and the Spirit. We pray 